Welcome back to another episode of 5 a.m. Theology. This week's reading had a lot of stuff in it that could warrant an episode for sure, a whole episode in No Trash, Just Truth. But one thing in particular stood out, and the passage, Chris, is about in Paul's letter to the church in Thessalonica. When we get to chapter two in 2 Thessalonians, Paul starts telling the congregation not to be shaken in mind or alarmed by false teaching that they were hearing. So someone had been spreading rumors, giving false prophecy, maybe even outright pretending to have a letter from Paul saying that the day of the Lord had already come. In other words, Jesus had already returned a second time. And the congregation in Thessalonica fell for it, and they were really afraid. Paul answers them saying, let no one deceive you in any way. For that day will not come unless the rebellion comes first and the man of lawlessness is revealed, the son of destruction, who opposes and exalts himself against every so-called God or object of worship so that he takes his seat in the temple of God, proclaiming himself to be God. Do you not remember that when I was with you, I told you these things? And what I just read was 2 Thessalonians 2 verses 3 to 5. So, Rose, let's talk first about who this man of lawlessness is. Well, Chris, in our book, The Final Exodus, Deciphering the Book of Revelation, we talk about him in chapter 7. That chapter is called Release the Kraken. So the man that they're talking about is the second beast of Revelation 13. It's the same one. In Revelation 13, Satan, who's the first beast, stands on the shore and watches a second beast rise up. So that beast who rises through Satan's power is given authority over the earth for a time, and he's allowed to make war on the church. So many consider this man of lawlessness, this second beast, to also be the Antichrist. The man of lawlessness may or may not culminate in some point in history as one specific person. He may be symbolic for someone or a group who head up a powerful but false one world religion. Something, Rose, we know that the Pope, along with the uh, Jewish leaders and some Muslim leaders, seem to be working on now. Or the Antichrist could be a shadow government secretly running the world right now that will eventually expose itself as a power working behind the scenes in all the nations. We quoted Pastor Joe Anaday in our book, who said that if the first beast symbolizes political powers that persecute, the second beast symbolizes the political, religious, and economic entities that serve as agents who carry out those persecutions of the church and the deception of the ungodly. Yeah, I'll, I'll read the rest of that second Thessalonians passage. Paul tells them, and you know what is restraining him now so that he may be revealed in his time. For the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Only he who now restrains it will do so until he is out of the way. And then the lawless one will be revealed, whom the Lord Jesus will kill with the breath of his mouth and bring to nothing by the appearance of his coming. The coming of the lawless one is by the activity of Satan with all power and false signs and wonders and with all wicked deception for those who are perishing because they refuse to love the truth and so be saved. Therefore, God sends them a strong delusion so that they may believe what is false in order that all may be condemned who did not believe the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Pretty sobering words from Paul. Very sobering words. Lawlessness is being restrained, but it's already happening. False teaching, outright heresy, sin that is sanctioned or even championed in the church, governments who become the quote-unquote god of their people by supplying their every need, or governments that persecute Christians all qualify for that. Yeah, and we certainly see all of that going on. And Chris, in the same way, it's likely that the strong delusion that Paul mentions has also been an ongoing reality through the whole church era. We see it in everything from charlatan faith healers like Benny Hinn to false manifestations of the spirit, with those things like being slain in the spirit or holy laughter. These are already not yet realities that are going to culminate in a great apostasy. And it's going to be the final manifestation of the man of lawlessness. 
and then will come the return of Christ. And we don't know what else might be coming down the pike. Yeah, we don't know. We know that many professing Christians are deconstructing their faith and leaving the church already. It's always possible that Satan, working through technology, will come up with a way to deceive people into actually believing that Christ has returned. Just like, like AI? Best- yeah, we <laughs> talked about Project Bluebeam in No Trash, Just Truth, episode 218, when we talked about the UFOs and UAPs. Is it conspiracy theory? Maybe, maybe not. But Jesus warns us, If anyone says to you, look, here is the Christ, or look, there he is, do not believe it. For false Christs and false prophets will arise and perform signs and wonders to lead astray, if possible, even the elect. And he tells us to be on guard, and that's in Matthew 24, 24. Like you said, Rose, we don't know what's coming down the pike, but there is an answer to our problem, just like there was for the Thessalonians. Yeah, it's the overall point that Paul is making in this passage. If we jump back up to verse 5, Paul gives the Thessalonians a gentle admonishment. Do you not remember when I told you these things? If only they'd remember the teaching they had received from him. He says, for the day will not come unless the rebellion comes first and the man of lawlessness is revealed. So Paul does give them signs they can look for. And if they would have just remembered Paul's words, they would have realized that neither of those things had happened yet. So Christ couldn't have possibly come without them knowing it. But Chris, what does this mean for us? It means we need to know scripture. You can't remember words that you don't read or study. You can't. We need to know the Bible well enough to ask ourselves, Do these things line up with what I know from scripture? And that answer might be a definitive yes, or might be a definitive no, or it might just be, well, this thing is possible, but the Bible doesn't tell me for sure, but I trust God. Exactly. By knowing the Bible and examining everything in light of it, believers can be vigilant. We can have discernment and we can be steadfast in our walk. God sends this strong delusion on those who reject the truth. And it's a sobering reality, like we said, but it's divine judgment that God will bring on unbelief and rebellion. So be a knower of truth and not a rejecter of truth, but make sure you know the Bible. Amen to that. And that's a good place to end for today. Have a blessed morning, everyone.